Good afternoon. I gather we are on. Okay. Uh, first of all, welcome to Facebook Live. The, the rest, everybody can hear. I'm in a big hall here, so everybody can hear me. Uh, this is a part two series of what I did before. I did one on the back, and so I thought I'll do one on the spine also. Now, uh, we walk, once we get started here, so my name is Dr. Aaron Lim. I work in Island Hospital. Uh, in times of this COVID, we are all wearing masks, but I think I'm going to have to take the mask off to talk because otherwise it's very difficult. So, this is much better. Okay, shall we start the slides? Now, this is our new hospital. Well, going to be new hospital. It's coming up probably in 2022. And I would welcome all of you to come here to visit and uh, have a look around, but try and avoid coming to see me for surgery because that is bad news, okay? So, I, as I said, I'm in Island Hospital. Uh, I work in the rehab department and I'm part of the rehab team here. And you will see, this is the rehab department. So what you see here on the background is the back here and there's a whole hall in front of me. Uh, the patients are all having treatment at the, this point in time. What we emphasize today is non-impact exercises. I think it's very important to save your knee. And the only way to save your knee is to try and not bang it on the ground and run, like I tell my patients, run like a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, but don't run like a Ferrari because it's not good for you. You can do that when you're 30, but not anymore. So this is our iSports team, and uh, some of us are still here. Most, well, most of us are still here. Some have left and they also have new additions. We also have a rehab center in, in uh, Sabrang Jaya. And this is uh, in, in just next to the general hospital. And it's, usually, and it's actually the same setup. Okay, so let's get on to the knee. The knee is made up of three bones. One, the front bone is called the kneecap. This part here is called the thigh bone and this is called the shin bone. So when you bend the knee, this grows across here and so that's how the knee joint works. Now most of the time, the pain is usually in front of the knee and the most common cause of pain in the front of the knee and the inside of the knee is arthritis. Now, unfortunately, arthritis affects women more than men by in the ratio of about 3 to 1. Now nobody really knows why uh, this is so, but there are obviously some reasons like menopause, uh, lack of exercise that actually uh, may be contributory factors. So once you have a bent knee like this, you are in trouble because this will wear out on one side and you will definitely have pain in the long run. So this is for an old person. But when you have bent knees like this, if you put your feet together and you see a hole in between the knees, you are also in trouble this one and that one not the same. Okay, so when you have a slight, when you have a gap here, it's also problematic because you will end up eating the inside of the knee here and you will end up with pain. So once you're born like this, also problem. Okay. Now this is the official definition of arthritis. Uh, the reason I put it so small is I don't really want you to read it because the real definition of arthritis is actually this, it basically means your body is aging when you have arthritis. Uh, it means your joints are wearing out, the pain is starting to set in, and it's not good news. So how do you avoid surgery in the long run? I will tell you eventually. Now, what would you think is actually an old person? There are several, I mean, if you look at athletes, I think that's the best example. Whether it's 20, 30, or 40, or 50 years. Uh, Everybody seems to think the new young is 60, but unfortunately the new young is not 60. I think the new young, you still have to go back to the old young, which is about 30 years old. Because after 30, you will start aging, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I mean, if you, look, if you remember all the athletes, look at Roger Federer, look at Nadal, look at Djokovic, look at all of them. They're all about 30 plus, they're all slowing down. Yes, okay, they've won all the majors in the last... 10 years, yes. But Roger Federer especially, he's 38. He's still playing, but he's not playing the same way as he was 10 years ago when he was 20 plus. So there's no doubt that aging starts at about 30. 
Uh, and usually you also hear these footballers, the, the, the commentators will say, oh, the, the players at its peak. That's actually bad news because peak actually means you're at the top of your game. After that, it's all downhill. There's no, there's no plateau. There's no such thing as plateau. You peak and then after that, it goes down all the way. So it's not good. So you're better off on the uphill so that you get better rather than being at the peak itself. So what we consider as this is when 30 plus is when aging actually starts. So if you can maintain yourself between 30 to 40 years old uh, for a long time, I think that is the best, but that's the difficulty today. So it is, arthritis basically is the body's reaction to use. Uh, and you, you, the more you use it, generally the more it wears out. Uh, that holds true for, like, for a car. And I always refer to the knee uh, like a car tire. So the more you use the knee, the more you wear out the joint and the earlier arthritis can set in. So there's no cure. Now you have to be very careful because patients always come and tell me, oh, a hole, oh, a, 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 uh, can you cure this condition? Unfortunately, by definition, if you cure means that you treat and it never comes back forever. Uh, that's cure. Uh, you treat, you have no pain, doesn't mean the problem has gone away, it just means that you don't have pain. It also means that your problem uh, may come back in 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. But you don't have to suffer the consequences of your pain. You have, can actually try and get around the, the, the problem rather than having to have surgery or rather than trying to get yourself back to 25 years old, which is impossible. So there are ways around the problem, but there, are no, there is no way to cure aging. There's no way to change the deterioration of your joint of where it is. So what happens in arthritis is this. When you look inside the knee, you get wear and tear inside the knee. This whole area should be white and if you look do surgery, you find patches of bone which are exposed. Now this is considered mild arthritis where there's only slight roughening and then it gets worse and this is the real bad one where the whole cartilage, where the whole uh, joint is basically almost worn out. So that's not good news. <coughs> so probably the most important contributor of arthritis in the knee is actually deformed joints. So when you have a deformed joint, you're walking on it every day, you are walking on one side of the knee, and that actually creates the most problems. Number two is weight. Because the more you load your knee, it's like everything else. If you load the tire higher, if you have more load on the tire, you have more load on your knee, you'll also wear out. So obese people, people who are generally a bit on the bigger side, tend to have more problems with arthritis than those who do not. So the joint forces is very interesting. That means when you come down the stairs, when you run, when you walk, the joint forces are very interesting. Uh, people used to think that the, when you come down the stairs, you increase your weight by about two times. But it really depends on how you come down the stairs. If you can come down the stairs quietly, then it might be two times, maybe four times. But if you cannot and you come down very heavy on the stairs, the joint forces can go up to six to eight times and even ten times if you are, if you are not careful. So the way you come down the stairs and the way you use your knee is actually very important. Weight increase, like I said, is really, really bad news because that's the worst thing you can do for your knee and also your back, but then we've gone through that before. So you feel some stiffness in the morning, it aches in the morning, you feel a bit, the, the, when you walk, when you walk long periods, it starts to swell up, you find some tightness in the knee. Uh, and then the most, in Asians, you, People find that they have difficulty squatting, they have difficulty getting up from squatting. Those are the symptoms that you have. So the front of the knee is the main area and the inside of the knee is also the others. So options, remember, we can control your problem, but we cannot cure your problem. Now the treatment, they are fourfold. Again, I will not tell you, I will not talk to you about surgery, so we're going to concentrate on what's called call medication supplements and injection therapy and a combination of all which usually is the case so weight number one exercise program usually i don't talk to patients about weight because i don't have to talk to patients about weight because all their relatives all their children all their parents everybody will talk to them about weight so i don't usually talk to them about weight because they know they know they're overweight it's, it's so obvious that they're overweight but i don't need to do it somebody else has done it for me already before they can even come to see there is an exercise program you can actually do uh, non-impact exercises. This is actually one of our consultants who rides a, what's called an elliptical. It's an elliptical bicycle that he rides around town. I'm sure you might have seen him if he's in Penang. And this do not, does not impact the knees. 
is much much better than running. Next is core exercises for your back and your lower legs. So Pilates, Tai Chi, uh, Yoga, extremely good because that makes your muscles soft, supple and therefore by doing that, your, when you walk down the stairs, the muscles do, uh, take up the impact of the knee and you actually save your knee. This is what I mean. You see, you have to look at your knee and your, and your spine and your muscles like shock absorbers. So the muscles are your shock absorbers. So when you run, you want to be able to run like a Rolls Royce. So when you run like a Rolls Royce, you don't hit the ground. The impact instead of going through the knee will go through the shock absorbers. And by doing that, you will then save the impact on the knee and therefore have less problems in the knee long term. Now, I've also been asked about knee braces. Do they work? Uh, actually, knee braces don't save the impact on the knee. But what happens is, when you use the knee brace, the, the knee actually feels more stable. <coughs> and, by <coughs> and by feeling more stable, you then feel that the knee, you can control the knee better. So in that sense, yes, the knee actually feels better with the, with the, with the brace. But don't forget, if you actually do fall down, the brace is not going to do very much for you. Because it cannot control your 60, 70 kilograms. I mean, you look at this, you cannot control 60, 70 kilograms joint forces from the knee. Insoles also help. Uh, it is no doubt that certain people benefit from insoles. If you put insoles inside the knee, uh, it changes the way you walk, it saves the joint uh, space, and therefore the pressures on the knee change, and you can actually feel better. Uh, shoes. Uh, I also get this question on shoes. Uh, there are actually many shoes on the market. Uh, what I would recommend is shoes like Essex, Brooks, Adidas, New Balance, uh, these are well-made shoes where actually they are well padded. There's a lot of research that gone into them and they are actually much better than some of the other brands. I won't mention the other brands, but the other brands I do not use are actually down here. Medicines and supplements. Uh, this one very interesting because uh, this is what I believe about medicines and supplements. Okay? So, let me explain. No medicines. It's a very difficult situation in Asia because everybody expects to take medicines once you walk into my clinic. Uh, usually I don't prescribe medicines if I can help it. So there are some supplements and some medicines which you can take. Supplements on the long term, yes, it does help. There are only some medicines which I use for short term. We're talking about maybe one week, two weeks, uh, maybe one, three or four weeks for the knee, but not very long. So let's see what you what the medicines are what medicines are available. Now these are so-called anti-inflammatories or painkillers. So there's Celebrex, there's Arcoxia, uh, there's select, so-called selective and non-selective. So if you are in really a lot of pain, you find difficulty walking and you come into my clinic in a wheelchair, yes, you will get medicines like this. Because obviously you have to try and get your knee moving, get the pain down so that you can actually do some, some function. So I'll give you either a course of Arcoxia or Celebrex for about a day or two or maybe five days. And then also some panadol to try and get the pain down. Uh, you're better off with things like Celebrex because they are less, they affect the gastric uh, problem less in your stomach. It's approved by the FDA as well. Uh, but long term, you should try and avoid it because obviously it does, it does give you uh, hypertension. It can give you hypertension and blood, uh, heart problems if you take too much of it. Uh, always check your BP before and after starting because. The, the, these medicines sometimes can raise your blood pressure and that's the dangerous part. Uh, between Celebrex, the Proxen and Ibuprofen, there's no doubt that Celebrex is, is much safer, less gastric side effects, less cardiac events, heart problems and less problems of uh, blood pressure. Okay. Uh, supplements. Uh, now, everybody talks to me about supplements, glucosamine, chondroitin, uh, ASUs and then the most recent one which is BioRed, which is marine phospholipids. So let's go through them one by one. Okay? So I try not to use anti-inflammatories long term and I've said that to you. Uh, you can use Panadol short term as well and it's very effective. So doctors usually do know what they're giving to you. So try not to try not to take it long term. Uh, but I sometimes I'm unfortunately some of my colleagues do, do give long term medicines which I don't really agree with. Okay, supplements. Uh, glucosamine. If you're going to take glucosamine, take the, the sulfate if you can get it because that's much better. 
Uh, usually it's, a, it's taken for up to, uh, it's usually taken by, as the knee joint as a substrate for repair uh, and it acts partly as an inflammatory and if you're going to take, take about at maximum 1500 milligrams per day, don't take more. Uh, there is incidences of patients developing diabetes if you go on high dose, so this thing is about double dose, triple dose which you get in the US, don't touch because that can actually be problematic. Now, chondroitin, there is an additive effect, uh, but when you add in chondroitin to glucosamine, it becomes very expensive. Glucosamine on its own actually can be quite cheap, but once you add in chondroitin, it actually becomes uh, even more expensive. Uh, there are some formulations which have MSN with magnesium, uh, that helps the muscles from being too tight, so that also helps. And then there are creams, some of the creams do work, uh, that one is, uh, you have to pick and choose whichever one you want, which I don't really use very much. Uh, sachets, better than tablets? Answer is no, they, should, they are the same. Uh, so don't worry whether it's the tablet or sachet. Different brands unfortunately do, take, do, do have a difference because what happens is uh, you may have 500 milligrams of glucosamine in the tablet but when it reaches your stomach, if it doesn't dissolve properly, the 500 milligrams is not available to, you, to the stomach. So there are different ways where it reaches the stomach. And different brands, the carrier for the glucosamine may differ, and therefore that's why there is a difference between some brands. So stick to the more reliable brands. Now, this is new on the market. This has been on the market maybe about oh, maybe two to three years. Uh, so it's called it's called marine phospholipid. Marine phospholipid has been shown to be uh, anti-inflammatory. So it's actually very very useful for patients who have pain, uh, the knee is inflamed and you can actually take it long term because this is a phospholipid uh, and it's anti-inflammatory effects not only in the knee joint but also generally in the body uh, and usually this is taken two, two tablets a night, a night and you can take it long term This is of course it's a supplement. So anti-osteoporotics I will use sometimes because on the MRI sometimes you get this bony white area in the bone which means that you have bone, bone swelling and taking things like Posamex once a week will help the bone swelling and therefore help the pain. Now the last but not least are injections. Uh, most places today will use, most doctors today will have a choice of several types of injections. You have steroids, you have hyaluronic acid which is viscose supplementation and then PRP and cytokines and obviously stem cells which is the, <coughs> which is the real in thing now. So let's go through it one by one. Uh, try not to use too much steroids. In your lifetime into your knee you should not have more than three injections because you can actually destroy the joint if you actually have too many injections. So in one lifetime is not in a year. So but three injections per lifetime and try and avoid it obviously if you don't need to have a uh, steroid injection. Two is hyaluronic acid. Now, hyaluronic acid is very good because you can inject a hundred times, uh, which I will not advise you to, but you can inject it as much as you want. It really is a, does not actually destroy the joint. It is a protein which, you can, which is taken up as substrate for the joint and that's repair in the cartilage. Now if you need it more than 10-15 times, I mean if you calculate the cost of doing it, you might as well have a knee replacement and have surgery. So obviously if you, have, you need to have repeat, many repeated doses of hyaluronic acid, then it's not worth it and it means that the, it's not working more importantly. And you should really do something else rather than just having HA injections. Uh, most of them are synthetic brands and then there's this argument of whether this high molecular weight or low molecular weight uh, is better. The low molecular weight ones are cheaper but they don't last as long and usually I will mix uh, a high molecular weight and the low molecular weight together because they work slightly differently. Uh, you should talk to your doctor about that but generally I will use high molecular weight like something like BioVis and then there's another one called Eurolay which is extremely good. This is super high molecular weight and it actually lasts. The uh, results show that using this uh, is as good as using steroids and it can last for about one to two years and even longer. So you, the injections usually is once uh, maybe some depending on the formulation, some of them two to three times before you, you get you have an effect. Okay. So repeated causes as next three and works best when you have mild to moderate OA. If you have very severe OA, there's no point doing it because you will just get more pain uh, and you just wasted your money. The injections last about 
six months and then we all went out again, so no point. Okay. Now, PRP, uh, unfortunately, not covered by insurance, but very good. Uh, it, it cuts down inflammation in the knee. It's usually mixed with a bit of hyaluronic acid. And there's a double strain system where you, you take your own blood, spin it down, and then you take out the central piece, the, the buff, what's called the, the, the buffy coat with the plasma here, you leave the red cells behind and then that is injected back inside into your knee and basically it functions as an anti-inflammatory but unfortunately the insurances in Malaysia do not cover this but it is very good, it's worth doing can be used every 6 months okay. uh, Cytokines are very similar to, to PRP uh, Cytokines are manufactured uh, and can be bought uh, this was popularized by Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant at one stage, I know he passed away already but when he was playing he used to have uh, PRP injections um, almost every three to six months to keep his knees going that's why he played in, in his early 30s and he was actually a very good player so for those of you who know uh, Kobe Bryant to play basketball so they are proteins they interact with the immune system and regulate the body's response to, to, to uh, disease and so you will feel a lot better with much less pain uh, once you have once you have uh, PRP injections, uh, sorry, cytokine injections. So they decrease inflammation, they decrease pain, and they can be used every uh, six to twelve months. Now, next thing we go is fat stem cells. Now, fat stem cells are very, very interesting. Uh, the fat stem cells are taken from your tummy, usually around the abdomen. It's usually done by the plastic surgeon uh, and then it is spun down and then it is, is then spun down into what's called a stromal vascular fraction and that is then injected inside your knee so it's a double plus you not only look better your knees also feel better so you can get rid of your fat at one time and also put it inside your knees so your knees feel better so that's one way of doing it uh, it's not done very often because obviously Liposuction is uh, required and that is uh, mini surgery and so depend unless you actually see a plastic surgeon to have liposuction you're not going to get fat stem cells. You can actually buy stem cells now uh, and stem cells are used in usually used in conjunction with surgery but you can actually do injections on its own. It helps healing, it helps regulate your anti-inflammatory response in the knee and your knee should feel a lot better. And these are given using uh, three injections over a period of three months and then after that you can have the injection done every two to three years you can use your own which is autologous but if you don't want to use your own you can actually buy stem cells today uh, they're called ele ele uh, they are called allogenic uh, they are used very often they are very safe uh, potential diseases and rejection there's no known problems with these two at this point in time so don't worry about stem cells i mean the most famous person I think I can come across in Malaysia who had stem cells was obviously uh, Lee Chong Wei. He had stem cell injections into his ankle before a competition about five or five, six years ago after he sprained his knee and he still managed to get into the competition and play into the final. When, but unfortunately he lost the final but he, still, he was still playing very well even though after he So allergenic stem cells work. Uh, this has been done for the knee joint, knee joint and there's 50% growth of new tissue uh, if you actually inject stem cells. So stem cells are brilliant. So in summary, uh, treatment options today without surgery are plentiful. You're talking avoid surgery if possible. And so core exercises, remember Tai Chi Yoga, exercise your, your quads, exercise your lower legs. Uh, try and decrease the impact across the knee. You can take medication and supplements and today I would recommend uh, marine phospholipids rather than anything else. Injection therapy, try your voice steroids, uh, use hyaluronic acid as much as you can and if you really want something fancy then cytokines, uh, PRP and stem cells which are called biologics. <laughs> Alright, and the whole idea is to get you running again, get you fit and well, get you walking. Thank you very much. Now, we will have some Q&A.
So some of the questions that have come across is does the cold room environment contribute to inflammation or arthritis? Uh, the answer is you the answer is very simple. Uh, people always tell me, oh in the um, aircon room I get I get more pain. The answer is when you have a problem, cold makes it more painful. It does not cause the problem, but certainly if you actually have pain already, uh, then in a cold room, yes, you get more pain. And that's why a lot of patients tell me that when they come back into, they usually move to a warmer environment, people from the cold, cold countries, things like temperate climates, they come in and uh, they go, they move to the tropics uh, to, 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 because it's warmer and therefore they will feel better. So answer is cold does affect the pain, yes. Uh, another question that's coming is glucosamine is recommended by a what cell, what, what dosage? I've gone through that before already. I said that do not have anything more than 1,500 milligrams per day. Uh, you can take it for life if you want to, there's no problem. The correct dose is still 1,500 milligrams per day at maximum. Uh, usually what I tell my patients is that if you have been taking 1,500 milligrams, then after about a month or two you get better, drop it to 1000 milligrams. After another six months, three months, drop it to 500 milligrams if you need to. Uh, how do we know whether, whether, how do we measure whether glucosamine, glucosamine works? Uh, if it doesn't affect you within the first month, forget it. Very easy. Don't wait six months. Uh, six months is too long. You take it for one month, two months, if it doesn't work, change brand first. And if it still doesn't work, I will change to if I, honestly, today, if you ask me, I will change to, to uh, marine phospholipid like uh, BioRed. Um, another question is, how do I find what heel insoles can help? That one you need to see somebody special, uh, you need to see a specialist. Uh, the rehab department in Island Hospital iSports will be able to measure you up for insoles. We, you, we have a podiatrist who comes in and out from, uh, to, to, who helps us as well. And so, uh, if you talk to these people, they will be able to advise you on insoles, whether you need insoles or whether, whether insoles will help. If you have problems, wear insoles. If you don't have, then no need. Uh, there are... Okay, uh, okay, whether, okay, I'll tell you this. There are a lot of places outside who are people who sell insoles. Uh, there's, there's a very, very known one in Queen's Bay and there are other known ones in elsewhere which which uh, costs about four times what we charge here. So, if you are, if you want a reasonable, if you want reasonable advice, come into iSports, and we will be able to advise you rather than having to pay so much for a for a for a pair of insoles. Uh, is walking suitable? Is walking not suitable? No, walking is very good for exercise for the for the knee. Uh, the problem is not the walking. The problem is that if your muscles don't work, when you walk, you will, in, you will damage the knee even further. So the first thing is you have to make, is like, remember I was telling you about the suspension rods? Your suspension rods have to work. You can drive a car which is with ball tires, it's okay, uh, with ball tires, and you'll still drive. But if your suspension rods work better, then you will have less pain in the knee. So it's not that it's walking is bad, it's just that the muscles across the knee is not working very well. Uh, then another question is, if an individual develops knee pain after exercise, how long would you recommend to rest for? Uh, the answer is very simple, you need to see somebody. You need to see a doctor. Because if you develop knee pain after exercise, there's something wrong. You should not have knee pain after exercise because if you have pain after exercise there's something wrong with your knee uh, it's not a matter of rest you need to get it sorted out because if you don't in another you'll come back whether it's one month two months three months six months one year it will come back so you need to see somebody continue okay does diet contribute to knee pain or inflammation of the joint or oh, this is a long story right? so, Diet, uh, diet, you can go on about diet for the whole day. Uh, there's no doubt that some foods seem to affect certain people more than others. Uh, but if you listen to every auntie or every uncle that tells you you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that, and you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you end up drinking air and you still not and you still have pain in the knee. So what affects you may not affect somebody else. 
So you can take pineapple doesn't mean doesn't some doesn't mean your friend who has who has problem in the knee can take pineapple. He can take body but you cannot. So it's very individual. So you have to try and see which one works for you. And it's um, unfortunately it's a matter of trial and error. So this one difficult. Uh, should I still exercise via walking, running, or using the stairs if I have chronic knee pain? Uh, the answer is that you should get your knee pain sorted out before you think about exercise or walking, running, or stairs. You should see why you are having chronic knee pain first. Because if you can solve the chronic knee pain, then you can do. You can go back to running, walking, and using the stairs without problem. So sort out the knee pain. Sort out the cause. Don't try and treat the symptoms. Sort out the cause. So find out why you got knee pain. I think that one you need to see see somebody. I like to continue sports exercise even after an injury. Will a brace help me? It may, uh, depending on what your injury is, uh, and also depends on whether you have recurrent symptoms after your injury. Because if you have recurrent symptoms, that means there's something again there's something wrong with the knee joint, and you probably need to see some see, seek professional advice to see what sort of uh, problem that you have because like I said treat the cause so you have to find out what's wrong with your knee uh, I, again I go back to the, the, the my, my what I tell my patients uh, when patients come to see me they always look for things not to do if, if you find one thing not to do every day you end up sitting down and not moving at all so the principle is not to find out what not to do the principle is to find out how you can do and what you can do, treat your knee so that you can do everything you want to do. Then you don't have to think, oh, this one cannot do, that one cannot do, all sorts of things. There's a lot of cannot do's. Don't. Find out how to help your knee first. That's the way to do it. In what case, another question, in what case or situation would you consider knee surgery? Uh, I think if you go through all the things I've done just now, uh, basically with the injections, core exercises, and, and physiotherapy, and insoles or, or braces and you still have pain then you probably will need surgery uh, if you have ligament tests you probably will need surgery but uh, there are specific things that surgery will help in. but in like i said in general try and avoid surgery to the knee because there's too much surgery being done uh, one of the things that uh, that gets done very often is meniscus surgery people patients are told that they have a meniscus tear uh, and then they are in surgery tomorrow already. Uh, a lot of meniscus tests do not need surgery. Uh, I will repeat that. A lot of meniscus tests do not need surgery. And you can actually treat it with injections, physiotherapy, and that helps a lot. Uh, some people advise not to wait too long until you get too old to get a knee replacement. There is a certain time to do a knee replacement. Uh, again, uh, the, the way to look at this is, is if you look at hash runners, you x-ray their knees. Uh, the knee is terrible. It looks really bad on x-ray but yet these people are still still running and you put them if you put them into a if you give them a knee replacement they have to stop running because the knee replacement cannot uh, will not allow you to run so the answer is if you can survive with an uh, with a knee which is worn out and still not have pain then no knee replacement is necessary but if you have pain then yes a knee replacement may be necessary so in general, try not to get a, have a knee replacement before your age of 55 to 60. Uh, you, you, having a knee replacement at 75, 85, there's never, never, never such thing as too old. There's only whether your health will allow it. That means if you have things like hypertension, blood pressure, heart problems, diabetes, and it's really severe, uh, then maybe you're not eligible for surgery. But that one, you need to talk to the doctor to see whether that really is a problem. Because most of the time, it's not. Uh, another question here, is it possible to have pain recurrence after knee replacement surgery? The answer is yes. Uh, patients usually will have pain across the front of the knee, uh, around the kneecap. That's a very common problem and there are ways to solve it. Again, you need to talk to the doctor who's done it for you. There are ways to solve it uh, with uh, injections and what's called radio frequency treatment to try and uh, cut down the inflammation and the nerve pain around the kneecap. Uh, it's very possible to treat things like this today. Can knee surgery correct how bow legged deformity? The answer is yes, but the thing is, if you are 25 years old with a bow leg, 
do you really want to go through surgery just to correct it so that you fought when you're 40 plus, 50 plus, you don't get problems? It's a very difficult situation because at 20 plus, 30, 30 plus, you will not have pain. Yes, you can correct it. Uh, some in with insoles, you can alter the way you walk slightly so that you can save the knee. But it doesn't mean that when you wear insoles that the knee straightens up. So, answer is yes, you can correct it with surgery, but I would not advise this when you are young. Uh, I think that's about it for today. Uh, thank you for listening and see you next time.